John Kornblum was U.S. ambassador to Germany between 1997 and 2001. At Checkpoint Charlie, he describes the first encounters between Germans and Americans after World War II. We didn't hate the Germans, and after the first few months, we realized that they were people just like us. We treated them with typical American friendliness. After 12 years of fascism, that meant a lot to the Germans. After the Second World War, Germans were living in a country that had been divided up into zones by the victor nations, the U.S., the Soviet Union, Britain, and France. The U.S. helped West Germany's revival by introducing democracy and the Marshall Plan. Care parcels containing coffee, chewing gum, and chocolate introduced the American way of life to West Germany. When G.I. Elvis Presley served in Germany, he was given a hero's welcome. The first German exchange students soon went to the U.S., among them the later CDU politician and former state premier of Saxony, Kurt Biedenkopf. It was four years after the war, and I was very worried that it would greatly overshadow my stay. But far from it. In fact, I've seldom been welcomed with such warmth as I was then. It really changed my outlook on life. That was 60 years ago. The former exchange student at the University of North Carolina in Charlotte often lectures himself these days. Speaking at the German Historical Institute in Washington, he recalls his experiences in the U.S. as well as the time he met former U.S. President John F. Kennedy, a very formative event. Don't ask what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. That was a principle that left a huge impression on my generation, and it still means a lot to me today. Another key event was Kennedy's 1963 speech in Berlin. As a free man, I take pride in the words, Ich bin ein Berliner. Those words were spoken two years after the building of the Berlin Wall. At the height of the Cold War, the speech also symbolized friendship between the U.S. and West Germany. But the friendship soured during the U.S. war in Vietnam. Images of the suffering endured by the civilian population changed public opinion in Germany. In the 1960s and 70s, Germany's student protest movement declared the U.S. its arch enemy. When President Richard Nixon visited West Berlin in 1969, the demonstrators were out in full force. In the early 80s, the peace movement gained momentum in response to the stationing of U.S. missiles on German soil. 300,000 protesters demonstrated in Bonn. As a diplomat, John Kornblum experienced these mood changes in both Berlin and Washington. In 1987, he helped prepare President Ronald Reagan's visit to West Berlin and the Brandenburg Gate. The idea to have him speak here and so on was basically mine. It was a time of momentous change, and we wanted to make the point that the U.S. did not accept the status quo and that we wanted to bring about change in Europe. We felt that there could be no greater symbolism than Ronald Reagan standing in front of the Brandenburg Gate. So that's what happened. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Two years later, the Berlin Wall did fall. Today, little of it remains. Kornblum attributes the peaceful end of the Cold War in part to the personal chemistry between three men. Bush, Cole, and Gorbachev have this area more or less personally. Bush, Cole, and Gorbachev experienced this area in person and helped steer events. Had these personal relationships not existed, then events might not have gone so well. Nicht so glimpflich über die Bühne gegangen. The three statesmen were honored for the part they played in German reunification in 2005. President George Bush Jr. was planning a war in Iraq.
Germany refused to lend its support, and relations between Berlin and Washington plunged to an all-time low. Barack Obama, however, was given a hero's welcome in Berlin even before he was elected president. Obama is in high space. Obama is completely unlike Bush, but his methods are not so very different. He's an embodiment of the American story just as Bush was. And he'll be just as active and visionary. Kurt Biedenkopf hopes President Obama really will usher in a new era and, with Germany's help, make good on his campaign message of hope and change. I don't believe that Europeans still look to the U.S. as a role model the way they did in the post-war years, but as a strong partner on an equal footing. Sixty years of German-U.S. ties. For Biedenkopf, it's been a turbulent friendship, but always an honest one.